Hey friends, Steve Guttenberg here, and I am the Audiophiliac, and today is a special day. Today is the first, I think, in a series of reviews done by you guys, viewers of the Audiophiliac. And today it's Tim, and Tim has reviewed the Crown XLS 1002 Stereo Power Amp. It's 215 watts a channel, it's into 8 ohms, uh, 350 into 4 ohms, it's a real powerhouse. It's when you bridge it, it's got a gazillion watts. Anyway, uh, Tim's going to tell you all about it. And I would like to thank all you guys who submitted, uh, sent emails to me requesting to be the Audiophiliac Reviewer of the Day. And there'll be a few more, but uh, thanks for the response. I appreciate the effort. But now it's Tim's turn. Uh, let's see what he has to say about the Crown XLS 1002 Power Amp. Hi, I'm Tim, and I've been an audiophile for, oh gee, over 20 years at least, with my roots really going back to um, high school, where I installed the stereo in my car and continually upgraded it and um, wanted it to be the best sounding that it could be, to the point where I had such good relationship with the, uh, the local store up here that I did business with, that they let me borrow their... Uh, spectrum analyzer over a weekend so I could really fine-tune things and, and get stuff sounding just right. So obviously I was into it more than just putting a big sub in the trunk and uh, wanting lots of bass. Very particular about things sounding very nice and clean and but vibration dampening over everything and uh, probably went a little overboard but hey I had fun and it kept me out of trouble. On the other side of the coin uh, I'm also uh, a semi-pro musician. I play the trombone in the Casco Bay Wind Symphony up here in Portland, Maine. So I get to perform on stage with a group of about 60 other musicians and play uh, orchestral pieces and symphonic works and uh, have a great time with that as well. So that's a little bit about where I'm coming from. And uh, now to talk about the amplifier. I think the 1002 is often overlooked. It's bigger brothers like the 1502 and 2502 get a little bit more press uh, because they have, they boast bigger power ratings and uh, also better signal to noise ratio. Um, but they also cost more. And I think with this line of amplifiers, do I think it's a giant killer? No, I don't really think so. Um, but I think the value that you get for the money is pretty amazing, especially at just the entry level. The 1002 retails, uh, I think, regularly for 339 bucks. Uh, I got mine. I bought a pair of them so that I could run them as monoblocks for $289 each. And what they provide at that price point, I think, is rather incredible. So if you're interested in trying out the separates game, uh, I think these amps are a good place to start. Uh, they might, might also be a good place to end, depending on your system. Uh, they boast all the same features that the rest of the XLS line does. It has um, XLR balanced inputs, RCA inputs. Uh, it has the binding post for banana plugs or bare wires. It also does the um, speak on connector, if you happen to do those. Uh, independent gain controls for each channel. Uh, it's got a front panel LCD so that you can control things like the onboard crossover, which I do utilize uh, and I find to be very helpful. And uh, it's got meter lights so you can see how hard you're pushing your amps and it's got a clip light to let you know you're going a little bit too far, which I, I find great because uh, I do like to listen sometimes pretty loud, uh, but I always want to make sure that I'm not pushing things too hard and having that visual indication of, you know, you're starting to get to the limits. Uh, I enjoy, but you can also shut those off and you can make it completely um, dark on the front panel if you so choose, um, which I find all to be really great. And the, again, the value for the money I find to be pretty amazing. And the fact that it just one can drive my Magnapan 1.7i's to quite loud levels. I mean, louder than you should really listen to for a very long time. Is it like a, a rock concert? No, it's not up in the 110 dB range, you know, that Maggie's just, you know, don't really do that. But it gets loud enough that I don't feel that I'm missing anything out when I listen to uh, to rock stuff. And on the, on the flip side, 
taking these amps and plugging them into uh, like the Klipsch Heresy 3s, which you can see back there, which are highly sensitive speakers, I don't get tons of hiss, uh, that background noise that sometimes can come with um, Crown amplifiers. It, it's, it's there. If you put your ear right up to the speaker, you know, you can hear it. Uh, but as soon as you start to get a little bit away, you know, it, it's gone. So the fact that it has a slightly less signal to noise ratio, I don't think that that should be something that should stop anyone from trying this amp out. And with the MagnaPans, it's dead silent. You know, you can't hear any hiss whatsoever. Um, so really, if, if something like this, if a powerful Class D amplifier, you know, sounds like something that you want to try... I would really give these a strong look, and especially because you can buy them at like Guitar Center, uh, and they have uh, return policy, so you can tr pick it up, bring it home, hook it up, and see how it works out for you. You know, uh, I find the sound to be quite agreeable. It's very neutral. It's not tilted up in the bass or in the treble. It's not grainy on the top end like some you know older Class D designs might be. Uh, and it plays very well with the magna pans, which conventional wisdom says you want class AB with magna pans. But I think we're getting to a point now where the technology of class D is really caught up. You know, you can, when it's implemented well, you can get great performance out of it. And, uh, and the clarity is amazing. The dynamics are great. Um, it's really hard to fault these amplifiers. Again, especially when you look at the entry-level 1002 and its price. Because if you can find it online for 289 or you can find it used, hard-pressed to try to find a better value with so much power and something that actually does sound good. So, again, I have mine running in uh, bridge mode, so I have one for each of the Maggies, and that provides more headroom than I need. I've actually blown the fuses on the uh, the tweeter part of the uh, Maggie. So if you own Maggie's, don't defeat the fuse. It's going to save your butt sometime. And, uh, you know, I don't, I can't really listen that loud. So it, it, the fact that it's got extra headroom to go, you know, it, it just brings a little bit more clarity when you're listening at lower levels, you know, uh, because the amp is just not taxed. It doesn't get warm. You know, the fans don't come on. Um, which brings me to another point of the amp. One of the downsides arguably could be its looks. Uh, if you have to pass things by your design committee at home to get things put into the living room, uh, this may not pass the test. However, uh, because it is relatively cool running, if you have a cabinet or a closed space that has you know, some ventilation, it can't be completely sealed, you could hide this away um, and again, shut off all the LEDs on it and, uh, you know, put it in a corner or inside a hutch or something and, uh, or a console table and you're, you're good to go. Uh, in my case, I like the looks of it and, uh, we have a, a two channel theater slash listening room and, uh, I have them out here on display. They're down on the floor just because they sort of go along with, with the look of the rest of my gear, which is predominantly black. And, uh, yeah, so it's just, you know, I can't say it enough that it should be worth a try. And just try it. Hook it up. You know, see what you think for yourself. Uh, you know, it, it, you've really got nothing to lose. And, and for me, it was a pretty big eye-opening experience. I had uh, a set of PS Audio M700 monoblocks here. And uh, I honestly, with these Crown Amps, decided that I didn't need those PS in the system anymore uh, because of their flexibility and um, just what they offer. You know, uh, the fact that it has the built-in crossover, uh, I'm able to cross off some of the bass uh, out of the magna pans and hand that over solely to the subwoofers that I have in this room. And again, that just adds more ease and clarity to the magna pan panels because they're not they're not trying to, you know, produce that really low, deep bass like uh, I like to listen to pipe organ music. And, uh, you know, sometimes that can be taxing. So by taking that off and being able to hand that over to something else and not need like an AV, you know, processor um, or need a third piece of gear like a DSP box to handle all this stuff. The fact that it's built right into the amp and is configurable right on the front panel so you can tweak it and try it without having to, you know, 
do software or anything like that, you can just do it with the buttons, is pretty great and, and definitely worth your time and consideration if uh, going separates is, is something that you're interested in looking at. So that's, that's what I have to say about the Crown XLS 1002, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks.